Continuing my series of top 7 games, I felt it was time to take a dive into the world of IBM compatible PCs, and more importantly MS DOS based games. DOS is a particular favourite operating system of mine. DOS 6.22, coupled with Windows 3.11 for workgroups, was the first operating system combination I truly acquainted myself with. It came pre-installed on my 486DX250 back in the Christmas of 95, and given that I've been using x86 architecture PCs from that day since, it's evident that the platform appealed to me. Plus, you know, it's kind of uh, mainstream now. So it follows that there's a whole lot of DOS games which I loved and indeed still love to this day. So this list definitely wasn't the easiest to make. However, I've come up with a winning formula. Essentially it's based on how much time I poured into each game. Obviously I didn't catalogue this through my youth so it's a gut feel, but it feels about right. Just be sure to keep your eyes peeled for several other top 7 DOS games in the near future. Let's rock. Number 7, Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon. Now this isn't my normal game type, usually I find the point and click genre far too sure. slow paced and they frustrating to get into, but there was something about this game which immediately took me, maybe it was yeah, James was Earl Jones' voice introduction, I'm getting too old for this. Who have we got lined up to deal with this problem? Maybe it was the tongue in cheek you scenes know, by Chris I'm Jones. Pretty insulted. Cause I'm a pretty damn good detective, and I can take care of myself, thank you. No! Maybe it was the blocky first person investigation scenes. I think in reality it was a combination of all of these factors. Plus I've always had a keen interest in investigation. In any case I loved this game, I loved the strange conversations with the tabloid seller and the voiceover cues from Tex. I completely forgot to tell you that I'm a gourmet chef and a licensed massage therapist. LA Noir, stand aside, you ain't beating this mother. Number 6, Zed. Take robots, tanks, strategy and networkable multiplayer and you have Zed, not Z. It's very much a command and conquer style game where you have to guide your respective team of robots to dominance of a particular landscape. You do this by taking on the rival team of robots who start out with a base at the other end of the map. Through building manufacturing units to create bigger tanks and infantry, you slowly build up enough forces to wipe out your opposition, take base camps and ultimately storm the enemy's fortress. This is strategy in such a pure form that it's utterly enjoyable. Number 5, Star Wars X-Wing. The first LucasArts DOS game set in the Star Wars universe was X-Wing, and what a blooming game it was. As one of the first games to use 3D polygons for spaceships, I found it absolutely marvellous cruising around this three-dimensional landscape, blowing the hell out of TIE fighters and capital ships in a style reminiscent of the early Star Raiders game. There are numerous missions including seek and destroy, convoys and escorts, but you can't beat a good old dogfight. Also to note that this is the first game to feature the iMuse dynamic music system, allowing the MIDI tunes to really hot up when the action got wild. Four, Grand Theft Auto. Released in 1997, GTA was quite a latecomer to the world of DOS, and was quickly released on Windows 95 as well. The original concept was actually intended for the Commodore Amiga to be called Race and Chase. Thankfully the platform was quickly changed to the PC, followed by the name. Since its release we've been through all the sequels, but none of them for me can match up to the excitement and playability of the first game, not even GTA 5. The first time I witnessed that camera angle flying in and out of Liberty City as it raced to keep up with your car over road, pavement or parking lot, I was mesmerised. I utterly love games with a top down perspective and this just took it to a whole new level. The freedom to do pretty much as you want was like a breath of fresh air and the challenge is just hard enough to provide a satisfying challenge without causing frustration. If you did get frustrated, you could always just take down a line of hair Krishna and get yourself a Garanga bonus. So that was good. Number 3, SimCity 2000. Days, endless days, no weeks, 
months, possibly even years, were sunk into this game and I still have no idea what the ultimate goal is or ever really was. There's just something utterly addictive about creating your own thing from scratch and building it into something magnificent. In this case that thing is a city, an evolving city which starts out in the 19th century and evolves into the future as you build higher and higher skyscrapers and more advanced electricity plants. Other than the exodus where inhabits blast off from your city, not having a goal doesn't really matter because ultimately the goal of any game is to relax your mind and have fun for a few hours or months. And SimCity 2000 certainly did that for me. I'm sure it probably inspired a degree of creativity along the way too. Number 2 Duke Nukem 3D This was a time when shareware was king and for me that was certainly more than true. The first time you hear John St John's voice you knew something yeah, was piece up of cake. and your intuition would serve you correctly. As you're dumped into an apparent earth landscape ready to kick some alien ass. Not sure what that was. The gameplay was similar to Doom, but there was more. There was interactive and destructible level elements. You could jump, you could talk, take a piss, and dish out witty or degrading remarks on a toss of a coin. I'm looking good. It was sheer first-person mayhem, and before this point, nothing akin to this had really been witnessed. I loved it, and once you plugged it into BT Wireplay, deathmatch and cooperative modes were something to behold. Come on, you all knew this was coming. Number one is Doom. Even after Duke Nukem 3D, you can't detract me from my first love. The first time I set eyes upon Doom, I knew my life was about to change. I knew we could never be parted from this beautiful little creation. Only you can make this world seem bright. Oh, <clears throat> This is the game which convinced me that I needed to convince my parents to buy me a PC. I think my entire gaming life up until that point had been waiting for this very game, for this level of interaction and immersion, this level of pure escapism, even if I could only have PC speaker sound effects to begin with. Damn, they're nostalgic. This game pretty much nailed the FPS genre in one fell swoop and it continues to be the game that so many FPS games seek inspiration from to this very day. I have always got time for a few levels of Doom, even when I haven't got time. Even when it's the middle of a bloody night, or I've got to be at a meeting, or a doctor's appointment, or a fucking funeral. It's an obvious choice. But like I said, this list is built on time spent in-game, and coupled with the various mods and expansion packs this game had, from the Aliens Doom to the WAD level editor, it wins, simply because it has to, and because I want it to. The DOS library is humongous, and it's probably even harder than the Amiga to pick a list for. So other notable games include Theme Park, Quarantine, Descent, Creature Shock, Quake, Malice, Rise of the Triad and Space Hulk to name just a few, but undoubtedly one of the main delights of a DOS game was getting it running to start with. Endless tweaking of autoexec.bat and config.sys to load drivers high, find enough base memory, install sound blaster drivers, configure IRQ and DMA settings, and even making sure you had the correct keyboard map was a game in itself. I think if I'm completely honest, I probably enjoyed doing all that more than the actual games themselves. So, as a separate award, I nominate DOS itself as the best game of all time, because it was certainly the one I poured the most time into with absolutely no question of a doubt. Thank you for watching my top 7 DOS games. Uh, there's plenty of others I could have put in here, but what the hell, we'll save those for another day. Uh, feel free to click a video below or contribute to my Patreon or leave, whatever you fancy really. In any case, thank you very much for watching and as always, good night.